Hello everybody, it's Adam Hurd with 973 Ramp again, and uh, this is actually a video I hadn't planned on, but some of my kids and some of the younger mentors are working on an elevator right now as a CAD practice, and uh, kind of some discussion about bearing blocks and how to do that kind of stuff. So this video is the first in a series that I might not do continuously, I might do this one now, the other one a couple days. Uh, and this is just going to focus on the bearing blocks, or at least the the concepts of how an elevator like this has bearings and wh where they should be and what they're doing. So this is a two-stage elevator. Uh, I broke the CAD model since the last time I used this. Uh, it's a cascaded rigged elevator, rigged elevator, so as this comes up, the second stage should move in unison. So if the carriage moves two inches, the second stage should move one, but that is not working. It's been years since I opened this up, so that's not too surprising to me. So uh, I guess first let's look at the carriage because that's the easier of the two to understand. You can see that for front and back loads we have bearings on all four corners on the front and back. So I think that's kind of immediately obvious to everyone what is going on there. And then if you sneak in here you can see we have these bearings on the sides and all four corners. So you could see that that would take side to side load, that would take this whole bearing block or the whole carriage kind of twisting this way. Um, and I don't want the takeaway from this video to be that you have to do an elevator with the tube like we did, with the bearings like we did, with the plates like we did. This worked out really well for us. I feel that any team with a manual mill could make these plates. I mean, you would just sand that angle or shape it however you want. I mean, really, it's just a series of holes that you need. Um, and it worked out really well for us. And if you look at how these plates are loaded, it's a pretty clean design. So I really liked it. Um, I mean, if you can get away with making the blocks that 254 does, Obviously, you can make that stronger, but there is much more resource investment to do that. Um, and for reference, these are R3 bearings. That's a 3 16 ID, half-inch OD, like 196 thou wide. Um, we bought uh, a couple different washer sizes on McMaster to do all the spacers. The longer ones are just plastic spacers off McMaster. Maybe I'll do a video on kind of tips and tricks in terms of fasteners we use, and that's a good one I like. I'll throw that in there. Um, and we use the 1032 bolt for holding these. Uh, the bolts are not detailed in all of these, so you'll just have to trust me on that. Um, the 1032 is technically 3 thou bigger than the ID that bearing. We just sand it a little bit to make that happen. So now moving on to the other stage, you can see that at the bottom of the second stage, we do have the front back bearings. Oh, so we actually modified this elevator design halfway through and we never move these bearings over. So those bearings should be more over where you expect them to be. So the bottom of the second stage has your front back bearings and it has your lateral bearings. And then because you can, because you, you could make it like the carriage where the carriage has all of your bearings, because you can, we put the bearings for the top half here. And the reason we did that, and the reason most people do that, is so that when the elevator is down or you know, halfway up, your gap between your bearings is much longer, and that reduces the load on your individual bearings for the same uh, moment load that whatever arm or whatever on there is applying. So, uh, I think that about covers it, unless there's any questions. Or I guess I should point out, these lateral bearings, most teams do not actually use bearings. You could easily do plastic sliders there. I feel the front back should be bearings, if you really want a smooth elevator, a fast one, uh, if the loads are really high. But even that could be plastic sliders. So every contact surface here could be plastic sliders, but certainly the left and right one could be plastic sliders. Um, so I'll do another video talking about how this is geared, the difference between a cascade elevator and a continuous. I will not demonstrate a continuous because I don't have good models of that. So if you guys have any questions about elevators, uh, let me know and I'll try to cover those in the repeat videos. But the real takeaway here is how you do bearings on something like this and what points you're trying to cover. All right.